Thou art worthy to take the book to open the seals thereof. That way he can begin the tribulation. For thou, so here's the reason why he's worthy. That's why his first coming is so necessary. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. See? Because he died, buried, and resurrected, shed his blood to redeem us, save us from hell. That's the reason why he is worthy to unleash the tribulation. See that? And so that his second coming can come down and we can all live happily ever after. Now, notice that, it's, that these 24 elders at verse 9 who's singing it, it's not just 24 in number. Notice the last part of verse 9 reads, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So these are people all over the world. And hast made us unto our God. See, God made you a what? King and priest. You're a king and a priest. And we shall reign on the earth. So we can reign forever with God Almighty. Because we're a king and a priest, man. That's something right there. Can I tell you something right here? Is that throughout your entire Bible, there was, there was no person ever who took the role of prophet, priest, and king. No one. So Moses was known as a king in Geshurim and even a prophet. But he was not a priest. It had to be his brother Aaron. You'll notice that uh, David, that he was a king, and he even prophesied when he was singing psalms. But he was not a priest. You'll notice that Elijah, he was known to be as a prophet, but he was not a king nor a priest. The, all the greatest characters you can, I can mention to you in the Bible you'll find out that none of them fulfilled the role of prophet, priest, and king. And there was only one person, Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, Lord. Now, can I tell you something else too, which is even more amazing? You, because you're born out of Jesus Christ's line, you take the role of prophet, priest, and king. You might say, how is that, pastor? Notice right here that at verse 10, you're already a king and a priest. And then if you read uh, first Pe Second Peter chapter 1, you, when you have the word of God, Amen. you're prophesying. Amen. Prophet, priest, and king. That's why it makes so much sense that 1 Corinthians 15, Jesus Christ was the first fruits of us Christians. He started something within our line. And you think being a saved Christian is the most boring thing in your life. You regret coming to church today, you know. Oh, why did my mommy and daddy drag me to church today? And do you realize how important your role is that no one else for thousands of years of history ever took the role of prophet, priest, and king? How about that? That'll preach. All right, verse 11. So we're going to reign on the earth at verse 10. Praise the Lord. All right. Verse 11, and I beheld, so John looks again, and I heard... So John hears now what? The voice of many angels round about the throne. So notice John hears the voice of so many angels who surround the throne of God. So in the middle is God, and then you got four cherubims, and then over there you got 24 elders, and then around there that surrounds the outer part of the throne are all the angels. Now notice right here the Bible says, and the beasts and the elders which I did mention, surrounding the throne is the four cherubim beasts, elders, and angels. And the number of them, notice right here, was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Now those are a lot of angels. That means, see that? That if one angel can knock off thousands of people, when you read your Bible, one angel killed like tens of thousands of people at one night. And you got angels that number more than the human population. Do you know how easy you are to be killed? To drop dead? And you think you're smarter than God? And you think you can take over God's kingdom who created those angels? You're beyond stupid. And that's just being honest. You're beyond, you got to be incredibly stupid to criticize that book. To correct that book and think you're smarter than what God wrote in the book and use Greek and Hebrew. And you didn't even graduate with a doctorate from a genuine prestigious university. And you think that you're smarter than God. And those of you who do have PhDs and boast about it in universities, you guys think that, oh, these Christians are stupid. They're dumb. They're ignorant. You don't know who you're messing with, man. Remember, this entire church age is called the age of not wrath, but what? Grace. 
and you're abusing his grace you're taking advantage of his grace by mocking God trust me when this start when we pass over here and he unleashes those seven seals you're gonna you've seen nothing yet of how how angry God is of how scary God can be you see nothing yet you you think one hurricane is enough to put all over the news for several weeks and whine and cry about it Imagine God did 24, 20 fold more of those. And you still think that you can take God's name in vain and make Christian and Jesus jokes? I would be scared if I were you. All right. So notice right here, that's the number of them. But this is very possible. It may not be just the angels. The reason why it says at verse 11, the voice singular of who? Angels and what? Beasts? And elders which means then then this is not just 24 elders then this could be a whole number of millions of Christians see that so that's very possible what we get out of that passage right here so this is an, again an indication or possibly even proof itself that this is not just 24 individuals this is all the Christians already up in heaven raptured all right let's keep reading Verse 12, saying with a loud voice. So now we're saying with a loud voice. Notice it didn't just say voice. It said a loud voice. And you walk away from church when somebody says, wow, glory to God. Boy, I'm going to feel sorry for you up in heaven because you got 10,000 times 10,000, 10,000 doing a loud voice. Loud voice. All right. Man, look, look at look at verse 12 worthy is the lamb that was slain and truly he is worthy because he was slain to receive what power Jesus Christ uh, when he went up in front of Pontius Pilate Pilate said didn't you know that I have the power to rule over you and to crucify you and turn you loose and Jesus and Jesus what did he do gave all that up and died on the cross he received no power the lamb that was slain, thus he is worthy to receive the power. That's right. After he resurrected, he received the power. Riches. Jesus Christ was born in a smelly stable. He was a poor man. He had no pillow but a stone to sleep on. After he died, buried, and resurrected, he received his riches. And wisdom. The Lord Jesus Christ, he was infinite in wisdom and knowledge, but yet he was able to limit himself where he was cursing the fig tree because he was happily searching lest there be fruit. He took upon human limitations upon himself. Wisdom and strength. The Lord Jesus Christ had all the power to heal the sick, raise the dead, heal the eyes of the blind. But he put human limitations upon himself and let weakly, frail soldiers crucify him on an old rugged cross. But he received his strength at the end after he resurrected. Honor. The Lord Jesus Christ, he said, a prophet is not with, is, has no honor in his own country. And he left his heavenly country where he had all the honor. After he died, buried, and resurrected, he received his honor. And glory. The Lord Jesus Christ, where was the glory of dying naked, in shame, being mocked and criticized in front of the whole world? But worthy is the lamb that was slain after he was slain, died, buried, and resurrected, he received that worthiness of receiving the glory at the end. And blessing. There was no blessing but a curse. The Bible says, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. And Jesus Christ took the curse of sin upon himself. Amen. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Right. After he died, buried, and resurrected, he received his worthiness and received that blessing. So that's why it says worthy is the lamb that was slain. Because all those things he didn't have, he is worthy of it now. And every, now look at verse 13. Now this is something interesting. And every creature which is in heaven, so there are creatures up in heaven, that means. There are animals in heaven. That does not mean, I'm not talking about your pets down on earth. All of a sudden they get raptured up to heaven. As much as you'd like that, that's not the case. Because look at, look at the next part of verse 13. And on the what? Earth. See, so your earthly animals are earthly animals. They're separated from heavenly animals. So I'm sorry about that. But the point is, is that there are animals in heaven, animals on earth, and look at this, and what? Under the earth. So beneath the ground, there's going to be creatures. And such as are in the sea. 
So obviously there are creatures in the sea and all that are in them, all the creatures in all of the universe, basically, what they're going to be saying. Heard I say, notice all creation, see, is going to say blessing. See, he deserves that blessing. And honor, he gets the honor. And glory, he deserves the glory. And power, he deserves the power. Be unto him that sitteth upon the throne. There's God the Father sitting in the midst of the throne. And unto the who? Lamb, Jesus Christ, deserves that glory as well. Forever and ever, they're all going to get it. Now, what's very interesting is this, is that if this does happen, notice this happens before chapter 6, verse 1, before the tribulation unleashes. Notice also this is after your rapture at chapter 4, verse 1. This may be something interesting. If this does have to happen before God unleashes that first seal of the tribulation, it may be that after we get raptured up in heaven, the world's going to see something. They're going to hear a shout throughout the whole universe itself. All these fishes come out of nowhere. These birds come out of nowhere. The lions and the creatures all come out of nowhere. And then using the voice God gave to them, and in their own language that they can say it, give praise and glory and honor to God. Amen. Now, th th what do you think uh, the atheist, what do you think the atheist is going to say? How did all these animals fit in Noah's Ark? And their dog says, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Oh, my <laughs> Silly little atheists, and God's going to pull a joke on them, you know, with their animals, you know. Look, look what they're going to do, you know. I hope some bird doo-doos on that atheist professor's head while he's singing, worthy is the lamb that was slain, you know. All righty, okay, I'm being mean. Let's look at verse 14. All right, let's look at verse 14. And the four B said, now isn't the book of Revelation amazing? I didn't even start the seals yet. The seals get really wild, all right, so... All right, let's, let's wrap this up now and then talk about the seals. Verse 14, and the four B said, so the four cherubims, now they're going to say what? Amen. So imagine all that. All of creation gives a shout. Hallelujah, worthy is the lamb that was slain. All these birds chirping, fish giving their voices, and then the lizards, and then the, an the bugs, the mosquitoes, and uh, the dogs, and the cats, and the farm animals, the cow, the chicken, the rooster, everyone giving a shout out to the Lord, and then the four cherubims are all going to say, Amen. Now remember, these four cherubims cover what? All the four classes of creatures as well. So it may be that they may be orchestrating this as well and supporting it. This is going to be something. Just one word. Phenomenal, man. <laughs> all right. And the four and twenty elders, that's us, right? Fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. No kidding, right? When we see all creation giving up, rejoicing to the Lord and the four cherubim says, Amen, you and I can't help but just fall flat on our faith and go like this to God out of amazement and wonder of the Lamb. All righty. Man, that was something. All right, chapter... We had fun at chapter 2 and 3 talking about our church age. Chapter 4 and 5, we've seen a lot of amazing things about what would be in heaven. Chapter 6 through 22, you're going to be in shock. Now